So, good afternoon. I uh, would like to thank very much indeed uh, Aubrey de Grey for this invitation and share some uh, recent and uh, less recent uh, results. Uh, I had already announced uh, in 2007 at Sense 3, so this is second appointment. Um, yes. How to sense stress and inflammation? And inflammation is reversible, as you know, and it is not so in senescent cells. In fact, I very early uh, defined my uh, markers, which were cytoskeleton, actin polymerization in TNF uh, stimulated endothelial cells, and uh, expression of cell adhesion molecules. So, hairy audacious goals, we have heard about this this week. So, bioguided identification allowed me, uh, on a library of organ specific and species specific endothelial cells, to identify four molecules out of 2000 uh, that turned out to uh, fulfill the criteria I had set and inhibit CAMS and actin polymerization in uh, TNF-stimulated senescent endothelial cells. So I got eventually an award from the French Ministry in, in France. I'm sitting in Paris. And uh, this provided me some uh, uh, funding in order to create a startup which I called Anti-Inflammatory Senescence Actives and do some preliminary work, which I presented as soon as 2007 here in Sense 3 uh, with the very ambitious um, anti-inflammatory senescence active to promote healthy aging and prolongation of lifespan. I wouldn't dare to say today anything like that, but enthusiasm is just the characteristic of the beginning. <laughs> so, some years later, I just can notice that the anti-inflammatory molecule turned out to have interesting, and it's uh, first metabolite, uh, uh, pyrrhic alcohol, in a non-pathological stress uh, system uh, model assimilable to maternal deprivation. So at that time, I just went through the very classical results that I here just skip, but to take you through in order to assert that very precisely uh, anti-stress effects were, uh, and anti-aggression effects were described, although it's an observational <coughs> test, so no uh, measurement of cortisol or any other thing. But this is an interesting experiment, object interest as talks uh, about motivation. So I had the chance, thanks to Claudio Franceschi, to uh, be part of a, a European um, project in which we could do the same story on healthy, aged uh, subjects, a multicentric study between Berlin, uh, Bordeaux, and Rome, 64, uh, 65 and 85 old subjects. And here again, we saw, isn't there a pointer somewhere? Laser, here. Here we saw that, in fact, uh, depression was correlated with inflammation and that this administration of our soft gel capsules containing our molecule were very different in effect as compared to diet only. So we were very happy. So we said, what is a pathology in which you have stress and inflammation together? What could that be? Colitis, for example. And colitis is interesting for many reasons. So this paper, which came out this year, collects several um, uh, experiments all over the years. But the most important one is obviously this one. In a TNBS model, we showed that TNF was be able to be lowered as uh, uh, low than a common anti-inflammatory drug does. So, uh, in humans, we had the same interesting, <coughs> significant results uh, about interleukin-6, and this was even uh, more a reason of happiness, and when we found out that NF-kappa B eventually could be the uh, mechanism, uh, we are completely happy. But there is nothing worse than being happy about results, because in this case, you start to think. 
So RISPAMED were able to lower, importantly, uh, uh, inflammation with a very specific gender effect we also published. So what we could say at this point, that there is a co-distribution between stress and inflammation. So either you stop mood disorders or you stop inflammation, but it's quite equivalent, as every basic doctor knows, who treats depression with antihypertensive and hypertension with antidepressants. So we went further on the basis of a very first conclusion saying mood modulating properties and anti-inflammatory effects of either 52 or 3 l which is basically the limonene, were confirmed in healthy aging 65-85 humans. Now, what does an anti-inflammatory anti-stress molecule do in food? It is found in citrus fruits, in particular, in their skin. What is the relationship between stress and eating? Why do people eat when they are stressed? What is the value of food for a stressed person? Is stress conditioning eating habits and dietary choices? And does brain recognize food? All these questions we had obviously no answer. So we started to look into literature and found out that micronutrients indeed are limiting stress and anxiety. And also that stress contributes to inflammatory disorders from colon exported to joints and skin. Therefore, I am now uh, collecting funds for a comorbidity study on uh, colitis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, and psoriasis. Now, in case you fall ill, said Gallen, the uh, Roman physician of uh, Marco Aurelius, in case you fall ill, follow this diet, and in half of the cases, you will not need any other remedy. What was this diet? This diet was just what we would call today caloric restriction, which we know is making inflammatory markers shrink, but also a vast range of foods, including lettuce, peaches, and yasins. The limonene also turned out in our FOB model, I was talking about in the beginning, to modulate number and quality of feces, and I think this is one of the most important results. I have thrown to the garbage and I have taken out now again because it's really interesting and because it matches with another piece of evidence I could generate in between on the mechanism. Epithelial barrier function improvement in colonic epithelial cells, these experiments were done in the Department of Gastroenterology in Berlin at the Charité. Uh, Professor Schulze was our co-author for this and very importantly we could restore barrier function, which was just only affected by the presence of circulating interleukin 6 and TNF, not by any mechanical disturbance. Two minutes. So conclusion two is d is able to preserve gut function, and this effect seems relevant to mood. Euphoria means good digestion. Beyond conclusions, it is known since decades that mindfulness practices decrease anxiety and depression, as our previous uh, presenter has already mentioned. And that in recent years, this could be uh, confirmed by studies in, ancient, in uh, elder populations, uh, 65, 85 old people. This is an American study that Tai Chi is able to lower uh, significantly interleukin 6 levels. So to say it with the words of somebody who is uh, there only in spirit, these small things, nutrition, place, climate, recreation, the whole casuistry of selfishness are inconceivably more important than everything one has taken to be important so far. So thank you very much for your attention, and I would be delighted to ask you. Thank you.